Hey yo, can we? So I'm up in there, 
just really in my meditation. I, I stay pulling out dollars. I'm just throwing dollars like it's a tip drill at the altar, you know what I'm saying, the whole time I'm in there. And then the next thing I know, it's like 30, 40 people up in there, and we talking, and we going in on Sambi. You know me, I'm going in on Sambi. I'm going in on Sambi as Anubis. I'm going in on Sambi as Hades. I'm going in on Sambi as Ohura Monster. I'm going in on Sambi as uh, Ampu, Ampu, as well as Melanin. So then when I start going in on why, you know what I'm saying, we wasn't necessarily worshiping these deities and how the French white colonial French people started adopting um, the occult to try to get in the game. I turn around, all the white folks gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, again, that's not me saying things specifically to piss white folk off. That's me talking about shit that really happened and then vibrationally, I guess, the energy that was going on. But what was real interesting was, you know, it was a cultural, cultural, you know, Haitian event predominantly hosted by um, the Haitian community. But um, most of them is like Roman Catholic, you know what I'm saying? So when I came in the spot and I'm saying this shit, I'm like, oh, okay, this is what's up. So as we start going in, like you said, the sister that um, that was urging us to come out, she said, you know, she's standing there and I'm seeing a baby, you know what I mean? So eventually all of these children, black children, man, just rush the room and they they just in there. So, again, I'm just going in historically on what's going on with him, culturally and what we could do and how to not, you know. So when the kids came up, they was like, well, how is he, if zombies everywhere, then how is he in our life? I said, okay, well, you ever see Star Wars? And they was like, yeah. I said, you know Darth Vader? He said, yeah. I said, that's Baron Sambi. I said, yeah, watch he man He's like, yeah. I said, you know Skeletor? He's like, yeah. I said, that's Baron Sambi. You know, um, <laughs> you know uh, Thundercats? He was like, yeah. I said, you know Mumra? He's like, yeah. I said, that's Baron Sambi. So then he's like, oh, it's a, so you saying he's bad? I said, nah. See, that's, the, that's what happens. They always give our ancient black deities the negative or evil rap because we owe, because, you know, they associate darkness. They associate darkness with, you know, evil, and it's not really the case like that. More they had that on. I'm like, where did he even get that? <laughs> he had it on. He's like, "Who's daddy?" I was like, "Okay." Well, he it for his That's when they started it. True. So. So I'm building all that. That was the other thing too. And then a more had his little Thundercats sort of omens, you know what I'm saying? So the whole time I'm building on shit, he's in there, and he's uh, he's in there, and um, he's just doing sword strikes, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just doing a nod to the synchronicity and what was going on, and I'm thankful for the ancestors for allowing us to go. And again, I apologize to you guys for being a little tardy, but I see the significance culturally of what and in three years, we've only been late like twice. No more, we've been. In three years, you know what I'm saying? We 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 strive to keep it real. So you know, we never want to be so bogged down of what we have to do that we feel like we have to do it. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to be able to do that and keep it real and share you guys what was going on. Um, this week, like I said, at least for me. Spiritually, culturally, is very, very exhausting, you know what I'm saying? Just going over a lot of the things that, you know, have happened as well as the things that are made to look like they happened and didn't, you know. So, again, we definitely want to give shouts and praise to um, Nemes Bastet, a.k.a. Whitney Houston, as well as those who have fallen, you know what I mean, in the lines of the same sort of satanic rituals. Um, people should know that, like we talked about, oh, before I go on, let me um, re re uh, assess something that like I said last week. Oh, excuse me, on Monday. Um, the initial chart breakdown that I read that night when she came out, when I was doing out her astrology sign, um, said that she had a Virgo rising, but actually that's not true. Because then when I saw another copy of her certificate, uh, it said that she... Uh, uh, her tornado chart, it said that she actually had a moon, excuse me, a Pisces rising, which makes a lot of sense in terms of her being taken out through the ritual of the water. Also, the fact that Bobby Christina was also 
fell asleep allegedly in that tub the same way. Also, if you notice the last picture where she passed Brandy that letter and um, that she was in, you would notice that her whole head and everything was wet. There was reports of her for the whole week leading up to the death and the ritual that um, she kept she was she kept being seen out, you know, generally helping everything, but her hair was just always soaking wet, as if she had almost like doused her head in water, or whatever. Now, they said that Bobby Christina fell asleep in the same tub the night before. So what this may, what I'm thinking may have happened as well is that the ritual might have been for her. They might have actually been trying to take out the baby. Well, she's not a baby, but you know what I'm saying. The daughter, uh, the night before, Whitney probably came, did the knowledge to it, and basically decided to be the stand-in and substitute it to save her daughter's life. You know what I'm saying? Because Whitney, again, was found in the same way. Now, the interesting thing is the fact that they left her body up there till the Grammys ended. So from the pre-party to the whole Grammy to the end of the Grammys, the body is still upstairs. So this means that there was no police tape, no security, no nothing. This means that people was walking upstairs, looking at her dead, in the bathtub, the same way you would do during a wake. Only thing, the, 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 the uh, coffin is the tub. And people was probably going up there, looking at her, doing whatever little rituals they were doing to her while she's dead naked in this tub. And Bobby Christina, who was bugging at the whole shit that it even happened like that, was trying to probably get upstairs to shut it down. And that's when they basically had her committed to the Cedar Sinai. And basically, was like, shut out, bitch, because we'll try to do something to you too. And because they had so many black people participating in this ritual. Now, this is the first time, I think, in history that all of us can kind of look at and say, there is no way you could be at that Grammy event and call yourself a human being and stay there to the end while you know and partying and laughing while you know this woman's dead body is upstairs while niggas is walking back and forth in front of me doing rich. You don't know what them devils was doing to her. In those hours, in those last days, same way they did Aaliyah. Everybody talking about how Aaliyah was killed in a plane crash, but the vibe we got was that she wasn't. Was that she? Just like uh, they want us to believe that these people had this baby naturally, had this Ivy Blue baby naturally in the, in the hospital, or whatever. But ain't nobody, no doctor, no nurse, no nobody you've ever seen them in the hospital. They was never there. It's a ruse because that ain't no human baby. I don't wish no negativity on no baby, but I know that them people is devils. You understand? So what I'm saying to the whole Super Heyru family is that this whole shit has been taken up a notch to the point now where you can't be sitting on the fence no more, okay? All of these people who who make, you know, DVDs going in on these niggas, Jay-Z and this one and that one and all of that, but then at the same time using their music in the same shit and then basically hooking up with niggas that's basically in the industry to try to, what, broker some way into the industry? Y'all niggas is going to be the first ones taken out by that shit, man. Because the time for fence sitting and all of that is done. You understand? There is no more all of that that, you know, this could have happened or maybe that's, that's conspiracy and that, that all of that shit is dead. If you, anytime you're around a black person and you start talking about this shit and these black people try to tell you that you're crazy, what you need to do is get up away from them and don't spend any more time with them people because them people, anyone who is looking at this thing like it's a natural... These are the first ones that will drop to their knees and suck open their mouth. To suck a cock for a fucking Grammy. Yeah. To suck a fucking dick, a dirty herpes infested dick mm-hmm. for a fucking trophy. Exactly. I, you know, it's really. And it's got to it's vile, but it's true. Yes. It's like, yeah, you want it so fucking bad. You just, oh, you just forgot and you put mm-hmm. the roofie. All y'all bitches get down the mm-hmm. thing. All these all things, of them. You can't be partying in no goddamn party, Brandy, and act like, oh, God, she was my godmother. Let's see what... Yeah, but you were a little jealous. You needed your fucking money. You wanted to secure your shit for the next 30 years. Mm-hmm. And you said, fuck it. I'll mm-hmm. take it now because I don't want to be the next one killed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to say anything because then they'll punish me. But... That's the whole shit. Yeah. No one says anything, and it keeps happening. Yeah. 
because these black people, because what I'm starting to do to now is that a lot of these, some of these black people want to be sacrificed. Like, look at me now, I ain't never see somebody that's looking to be sacrificed that much in my life. You understand? I ain't never see somebody who will go, who will go through the Madonna, who will go through the ritual, the Madonna ritual, all of that, and then to then take part in the exorcism, knowing this woman's dead body is up. Stairs. That's what I'm saying. But if you there's look at no, the human eye, she don't even look like she's in her eyes. There's no... I think that they just find the right person. Let me tell you. Just, oh, man, oh, man, there is no Nicki Minaj. There is no, no, uh, what you call it, Beyonce. None of these people exist in the in the conventional sense. These are not real people. Whatever reality that these people were or had within them or whatever is gone, what you are dealing with now is an afterthought or an entity that has allowed itself to look the same way. But let me tell you, none of these people look the way that they are on there, and none of them can. Also, we got to do the knowledge that whether or not this was a ritual for Elizabeth's Jubilee, you got to understand, too, what's going on with them is there was a ritual that took place a couple of months ago, way two months ago, I think, to this day, that this thing happened with Whitney. They found a dead body uh, approximately six miles and uh, six miles from the uh, home of the uh, Windsor family. And this woman was found naked, right? Her hair was wet. And she was, what you call it, she was found uh, on the, what they call on the moors. And what happened was Scotland Yard had to close the case or allegedly close the case for, for what they refer to as national security reasons, which means that this was a ritual killing that was almost a precursor to what was going down with the Jubilee for the Queen. This was the first one. So... To culminate this whole thing, not only to, I think, hide what was going on in terms of the assassination of this other, uh, the new president of North Korea, I think it was also connected to that. But I think that the older connection was connected to what happened with the, which happened with this body they found on the Queen's estate. So, again, there is nothing in mainstream media West society or whatever that is taking the fact of satanic ritual abuse and killing seriously. Like I said, the United States government to protect themselves from being revealed and the fact that they mind control the maturing candidates and raping children and the fact that the CIA, CIA is the biggest, makes a lot of their money or for human trafficking or for white slavery, you know what I'm saying, or for drug dealing. Or for murder, ritualistic murder and killing. You understand? This is what these niggas. This is what these niggas mean when they say they serve in their country. You understand? That's the first thing one of these niggas tell you. Oh, I'm serving my country. I'm serving. No, well, what is your country? Because I live in America and I don't feel that the country is based on satanic ritual abuse. I feel like there's niggas that's maintaining that to keep everything popping and keeping a certain group of people on top. But that's not what the country was founded for. That's not what we was doing during the Iroquois Confederation or the Continental Congress. We wasn't sacrificing each other to get down with that shit. We wasn't doing none of that. All of that stuff started when we started letting these white folk up into our grand rituals, our intimate um, relationships, and started using them as a buffer between each other. You have to understand, we as black people are totally in the open here, man. We don't have no protection from no one. You understand what I'm saying? No one. We have no protection from no one. God forbid some shit went down to a Chinese man. He could always go to the fighting Kong. He could always go to, to the Chinese godfather or whatever in Chinatown, right? If if the Italian man got some shit that's going on with him, even though the mob has got their ass wiped out since Goodfellas, they still got a little... Un, uh, unseen community, I'm sorry, unseen community where somebody can help them resolve their shit. That's the kind of group federation, the group forming we need. Like, okay, all y'all crypt, your blood, but really coming together. Not even just the gang, people that want to be a part of something. It's like, but let's have a little small black mob. That would make sense. No, nah, but they got rid of the black. Exactly. They got rid of the black oh, mafia during, during, yeah, you just going to say, like, oh, um, I said, Frank Ocean. 
you're talking about Frank Lucas. Yeah, they got they got rid of a lot of this stuff during the wars that took place between the Muslims and all of that um, once uh, Malcolm uh, was killed. So a lot of those situations that existed prior to that don't exist anymore. So what we had also, the infrastructure black mob that we had from back in the days was destroyed again when they helped destabilize and destroy Black Wall Street. There's books that you can get on this. One, there's a book called The Black Brothers Incorporated. Then there's, uh, then there's a, uh, another book called Brothers Gonna Work It Out. And a lot of these books, when they get into it, what you start to glean off of it was that we really had an infrastructure. We had a community infrastructure. Don't let these niggas fool you. What destroyed our community infrastructure was busing with integration. This is when whatever little protection we had was taken away because we then left our community up for grabs for these niggas to come in and tell us how to run it, tell us what we could have in it, tell us who could be in it, and so forth and so on. And to this day, like I said, like when you when you start talking about the influx of, of, of immigrants over here, Instead of a lot of these immigrants that may be of melanated descent or whatever coming over here and trying to hook up with the homies and keep shit real, they come over here and insulate themselves in their own community and start to treat us in some instances just like the white man do. Why? Because they're trying to get over on niggas too, okay? Everybody want to look at the black man in America like he's the most laziest nigga in the world and the black woman in America like she's the, the biggest hoe or whatever in the world. But everybody base everything they have on us. Everybody come over here and emulate us. But then at the same time, they disrespect us. Why? Because they know that we don't have no real political infrastructure to stand up and shut niggas down. What we do have is gangs and crime. You know what I'm saying? I've said it on the show many times, man. The gang's going to be America's last hope. People think it's a joke. This crypt, this blood shit or whatever, and then they try to invest in that. They've now tried to infest that with Satanism and Satanic law and Satanic rights and shit. But because most of them black people deal with spookism and deal with the fact that they'd rather be cool with their enemies than take their enemies out, we in this steady kumbaya thing. Because, see, the Martin Luther King program juxtaposed with the with the Malcolm X program really messed a lot of people up because it's made people feel like if you try to defend yourself or try to stand up and say that this is wrong somehow or another, then you are not being nonviolent or worse. You being a, a uppity nigga or somebody that's here to cause trouble. And in the process of that, you should just be happy for the fact that, you know, all you niggas were slaves anyway and you don't really have nothing. So you should be happy with what you get. That type of attitude is what creates a fictitious society that makes people feel like they got to join something else, mainly join up with the same oppressor that's killing them, that's eating them, literally. You don't know what they harvested out of Whitney, Whitney Houston. Same way that they said that they buried Michael Jackson without his brain. Same way that they said that they, they, uh, that they got uh, Harriet Tubman's skull and, uh, excuse me, the top of Harriet Tubman's skull and the, the, uh, uh, Skull of Geronimo up in the tomb and shit like that. How come ain't nobody know but everybody knows it's there? They even said that they got Malcolm X's penis up in there. Okay? And this is what your boys and them are saying. Alex Jones and the rest of these niggas on their early shit. But this is back when Will Cooper left the dead was out here shitting on Alex Jones, David Icke, and everybody else that's, that's big now. But for some reason, people like to hear bullshit from people who other people say is smart. And they don't do their own research and do their own knowledge to what this person is actually saying. So when I say that Jordan Maxwell is actually Michael Aquino, niggas look at me like I'm crazy. Like, like, like plastic surgery can't happen like that. Like you ain't seen a million and one movies and read a million and one books and niggas getting their whole face resurges, resurgerized or whatever to become somebody different. They do that shit every day, man. Every day they flip at somebody. How do you think they got all these Nazis over here, man? How do you think that you are part of a satanic ritual uh, in the form of watching the Grammys? Where's that? None of that shit existed prior to 1933. Them niggas wasn't over here like that. But again, because they're white folk, and again, when I say white, I'm talking about 
Anglo-Saxonized people who view themselves as superior to everybody else based on a deficiency. So these same niggas that will talk all of this stuff and try to analyze this and analyze that and bust shit down and come up with this this paper and whatever, whatever, these are the same niggas that's waiting. they waiting for a chance. They waiting for somebody to call them. You know what? I saw that Blueprint 322 you did. Or I saw this 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 metaphysical hip hop currency shit you did back in the day. This shit. So I really want to holler at you or whatever. What works? What works? They bosses. The niggas who really who they really the behind the scenes niggas holler at you. And then what? So again, I'm using these as examples. I'm not talking about anybody specifically because I know niggas like to twist shit. You know what I mean? Like, niggas don't support a nigga, but they listen and shit every week to see if a nigga gonna say something about somebody else, and it's not really what this is about. This is about the bigger grand scheme of things are based on people's actions. The actions. If you say that you conscious and you metaphysical a certain way, that that means that there's certain energies that you're just not going to job with, regardless of what they're about. But see, to do that means that you have to be discerning and you have to be the type of person that's willing to take a stand for something. And most of our people don't stand for nothing. They stand for bullshit, man. They stand for taking niggas in child support court. They stand for 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 uh uh getting getting a queen, getting a beautiful black queen, having a baby with her, but then on the low, you you know, you out the strip club every week trying to fuck the white girl or something else. You know what I mean? This is the type of shit that's killing our community. And because we have nothing in our community, nothing in any of the groups, in any of the ideologies that you have ever come in contact with since you've been conscious, what group specifically deals with deprogramming, MK Ultra shit, what, what group actually takes that shit seriously and sees that as a, as a viable means of, of something that we need to deal with in this revolutionary bond state? What group has, have you ever heard say anything about that? Like, I, there's certain groups out now that's talking chemistry shit and all of that, and when it, when they first came out, Egypt was the devil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The ark was the sign of Satan. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so is it more important to have real friends or Facebook friends? Because the Facebook friends are the people that you don't really know, but those are people that you accumulate to look popular. That's the G. That's the game, man. But what about the friends in your personal life? What about the people around you, the people that you actually see every day? What's your relationship like with them? Like I said, if you want Facebook every day, if you change your if you change your profile picture shit like that every day, you gotta understand that a profile on you. You the type of nigga they looking for. You the type of woman they looking for. Because you're willing to just put everything up. Everything you doing, what you eat, how you act, what you like, what you don't like, who you used to go out with, this, that, like, no. No, that's not the, that's not how I want these niggas to look at my Facebook page. When they look at my Facebook page, I want them to be like, damn, this nigga's still shitting on them. That's the type of Facebook page I want. I want to always be able to put something out that is telling and reminding people that there's still work to do, that there's a lot to this shit that we are still not dealing with and it's killing us. It's literally killing us. You have people that we revere, okay, that's out here coming upstairs watching a dead woman in a tub. Now, I ain't got no pictures. I ain't got no evidence and none of it on that. But guess what? Ain't nobody going to call me a liar because I ain't got to be burnt by fire to know it's hot and it'll hurt. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have to join up with something just to feel like I was a part of something. Especially when niggas ain't trying to join up with the most important thing, which is the truth. Whether we like each other or not, whether we want to deal with each other or not, whether we feel that, you know, this one is better, whatever the hang-up is, is irrelevant it is totally irrelevant now because they're going to make this woman a woman who, again, was positively aspected. I don't think people, you know, I'm not going to big up drug abuse, but guess what? A lot of Pisces have issues with drugs. Why? Because they're positive, because they have a heavy influence in this room. And a lot of them are very emotional. And so they accumulate a lot of residual 
empathetic emotions residualized that come off of people in the form of thought forms. And sometimes they can't close that shit out and it becomes too much for them. So what they try to do is medicate themselves to dull the voices. Now, I'm not condoning drugs. I'm not saying that she needed to do that, whatever. What I'm saying is she did it and she she rose above it. So you mean to tell me this woman who did coke, weed, huge amounts of hard alcohol, fits the gin, fits the jack, you know what I'm saying? You mean to tell me this This is a strong woman, man, who, who went through bouts of anorexia, okay, and won and came back and was, and, and was still producing movies, still producing records, still getting niggas deals, man. People don't remember, but she created a platform for Brandy when Brandy was just coming up, when she made Brandy Cinderella. Y'all remember that? When she was Brandy's fairy godmother. Remember that? What? So, again, I'm not condoning the fact that this woman was also down with them, because she was. But she wasn't down with them to the point that she was basically trying to set up a sacrifice for somebody else. She was down with them to get whatever she was supposed to get based upon issues of her mother and her god and her uh, aunt, Dionne Warwick. She's, she's very silent now. Sissy's very silent right now. You know what I'm saying? But, again, I knew the fix was in when they had this nigga T.D. Jakes come in as one of the executive producers for the new Sparkle remake that they got Jordan Sparks in, in which she is now doing for Jordan Sparks what she did for Brandy. So, Jordan, better watch out. But then again, they might not do her because her mama white. Let's make it real racist. Let's let's go all the way in. Let's keep it real. Most of the niggas who mama's white don't be going through that. Like J. Cole, his mama white. You know what I'm saying? Alicia Keys, her mama white. You know what I'm saying? So there's a certain connection bloodline-wise where they're going to try to do certain things. Remember, Alicia Keys was the replacement for Whitney. Just like Alicia Keys was the replacement for Mashonda in Swiss Beats Life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Really do the knowledge, man. People look at these people like they're supposed to be the group. Like people see some of these people and break down and cry. You know what I'm saying? And and have all this emotion. And these are the most disgusting, horrible people in the world, man. What part of the game is if this chick is a hoe and she's known to be burning like that, then every other nigga in the hood want to get with her? When was that? When did that ever become the, the, the fashion in the hood, man? I'm not trying to disrespect black woman or any woman, but keep it real. Back in the days, the hoe was the hoe. So you always knew what you was getting when you dealt with the hoe. That's why she was the hoe. But since when did these niggas try to create hoes and now turn them into housewives and then worse, start to, like, diss real black women for them? Amber, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Rose up, you know? All these ch- all of these people, son, we are beset in a war with principalities and powers and people in high places. So, again, I put it to the people, man. When it comes to proving shit and all of that nowadays, like, like I really feel we passed that. You know what I mean? Like, when we did, uh, when I first did, or we first did the metaphysical uh, hip-hop currency tape, that was one of the first real ones on breaking all of this hip-hop shit down. Uh Big up to Black Dot as well, because he was the one who create, who really kind of set it with the hip hop decoded. Keep it real; people don't give him the respect for all of that, and he was one of the main forerunners of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Specifically with the hip hop shit, okay? And um, but once we went in, I felt like I went in so hard with that, I didn't need to go back and keep doing that because that's also giving these niggas power. You understand? You have to understand who benefits from certain things. That's why when you're dealing with certain interests and high levels, you just certain names, it's just you don't even say. Because these people are protected by the Lord of the air. And air blow everywhere. But air is not grounded in nothing. Therefore, the air is what is used to transmit the energy between both. The air in the form of the breath. You know what I'm saying? 
as well as the air in terms of the aether or the, the, the soul. So when this sister made this transition and, and leaped out like that, and then they created whatever fictitious ritual they wanted to be a part of that, they, they, okay, they, they re, they repurposed what the actual ritual was supposed to be and going to be. That's why I feel like it's not really about, as much as it was about Whitney manifesting Elizabeth, get up, manifesting Elizabeth and them doing this for her, they don't even really respect that chick. They just had a, a, a mock trial a couple of months ago, maybe two, three months ago we reported, where they was basically, they needed to send barristers over here from the Temple Bar to show and prove why the queen should still be recognized as the rightful monarch of the United States. This all came at the time when they started to mess with the, or they started to mess with this whole health care bill with the, um, what you call it, Social Security. Because all Social Security money basically goes to her private account, you know. But I digress. Again, the bottom line, people, is that since this has been going down, it's like I've, it's like every day. It's just more and more intel and more and more corroboration to what corroboration of what it is we've been seeing. And the fact that this now is the most open ritual I think they've ever done, that now is time for the payoff in which now all bets is off. They have shown you that they will not only kill you, have a party around your death, uh, uh, God knows what they were doing to this woman's body, okay? God knows, okay? But regards to who or what, if they could do that to her, they do that to anybody that's famous in that game. So, again, when this, not only will they sacrifice you, but they will also get the most prominent version of you or the newer version of you to come in and participate in the damn ritual, participate in killing you and ritualizing you and exercising you. I don't I don't know how people is looking at this Nicki Minaj. I don't know how, like, People was even looking at this chick as a human being anymore. Like, like as far as I'm concerned, like after this shit happened, and I think it's real. It's like the line between what is, you know, man, mankind, and human has now become even more defined now. You know what I'm saying? Because humanity, you know what I mean? Humans don't do shit like that to one another. So I don't give a damn how much money you're making, whatever, especially these black people. So for all those black people that may be in the industry listening in the dark, because I know that's what they be doing, because niggas be telling me, yo, they be listening to me saying, well, listen, listen close to what I'm saying, man. All y'all niggas huddling in the dark, all y'all niggas acting like y'all, y'all got knowledge and shit because you want to be in a game and you want to act like, you know, you still got a soul, it's a rap for you, son. It's a rap for you. It's a rap for all of y'all, males, females, y'all children, all of y'all is out of here. All of y'all is out of here. When I went and I saw this Baron Somdi shit, this whole room size altar, and then I'm talking to one person, turn around to 40, 40 other people around me now, talking about this. We all in the dark around the skulls and the candles, talking about Somdi. It's a wrap, dude. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. So the occult aspect of our metaphysical consciousness has now reached another level just due to the fact that this goddess has has manifested herself into the ethos. So what we need to start doing right now, for those of you who give a damn, is whenever you think about this woman, for those people who have altars, get you an altar and Get a picture of her, and on the back of the picture, right, you will be avenged, Whitney, or Nemes Bastet, or get an image of her and an image of Bastet and put, or a statue of Bastet and put her picture under the image of Bastet, and then on the picture, right, that you will be avenged. Then what you do, you get you like a violet, a violet or like a gold or like a silver silk scarf or something like that and wrap it up in that. And then whenever you think about the sister or any loved one or any of our ancestors or any of the people who was in this shit and want to get sacrificed or whatever, you want to send positive protection light energy to them and their descendants. Visualize the image of that person with a violet light 
or royal blue or gold or silver eggs revolving around the image of that person as they travel further into the into the outer recesses of the universe, going back. Visualize them going back in time towards the bosom of the great father, mother, mother, father, God, those of us who still believe in God. You know what I'm saying? And see if this God is... If this woman don't come and give you greater insight to what's not only going on in your life, but to watch out for those niggas in your life that's trying to ritualistically sacrifice you. Don't think that shit just goes on in Hollywood, man. That's the G2. This shit happened every day in the hood, man, because our parents and them was broken after 1945, being that they was part of the baby boomer generation, which is the first MK generation in history. And these are the ones that they flipped all that shit on, and we are the remnants of that. That's why you find it hard to maintain a positive relationship with your parents and certain people after a certain time. Because, again, we are at war with principalities and powers, but a lot of niggas who act like they know what magic and this type of shit is, they don't, they not really, they they playing, yo. They playing games. They playing. You know what I mean? What are you doing? I'm looking for a more leading. Get in the tub, please, I'm on. I'll get them more. Get in the tub, baby. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me um, see if we got any calls. Does anybody want to say something? If anybody want to say something, you can call in. The guest call in is 347-637-1184. We got 22 minutes left. Yeah, we'll be there on Monday. Peace, 980. You want Super Radio? Peace, 980. You want Super Radio? Hello, hello, hello. Radio? Am I here? Yes, you hello. are, brother. Hey, uh, this is yes, Brother Yes, you Asa. are, brother. You here? Brother Ace of calling out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, good to hear you. First That's time I heard up, the brother. show. Big up to All Charlotte. Right. Thank you for calling, brother. How you doing? Pretty good. Um... I I want a question and a comment. The first question is Barry Sambi. Can you go in more in detail about Barry Sambi? I understand him as being in the underworld and the Lagbar's brother, Mm -hmm. a new transition Mm -hmm. in the realm. That's right. And then I wanted to make a comment, too, about you said something about health care, and I noticed how they're doing the – they're talking a lot about contraception now. So it looks like the government is getting involved Mm -hmm. in that. And I'm trying to how to tie all that into – Ritual, what they're trying to do with women, what are they going to be lacing the contraception with, and why is it a big concern now with contraception? What's going on with that? That's all I had to say. Yes, those, those are great questions, brother. Thank you for calling and uh, letting it be known. Um, well, first, Baron Sambi, who's the Lord of the Roads, you know, is is the ferryman who takes you across the River Styx. He's also Anubis, who takes you from the land of the living into the realm of the dead, a mentor. He's also Hades, who took Persephone and uh, took her down to the underworld. He is any deity or underworld deity that represents going from one state to the other. So really he's a, a, a energy that deals with transition. Okay. And um, he also as Anubis or Anpu is, is a symbol of black or what they call the triple stage darkness, which is melanin in its primordial essence. The part, okay. the part of the universe that we originally derived from is outside of creation, totally outside of it. We developed in a point where the Big Bang took, took up. Prior to the Big Bang, that place in Kabbalah, is referred to as the endless world. And at that place, everything that we ever wanted and ever will be and ever could be and wanted to be and wanted to aspire to and maintain is there. That place is protected by the Gede, who act as the girdlers to keep the unwanted souls out of that realm. But you have a certain lower class of deities subordinate deities who set themselves up to be the pseudo-lords of this world 
So depending on how you enter into any religious or or Voodoo or metaphysical system, your ability to rise in it and stuff like that sometimes is developed upon what you perceive yourself to be doing. If you are worshiping something that you may not fully understand in a worship aspect, right? Let's say you grew up Baptist, right? But then you, for some reason, when you got consciousness, you had a real uh, affinity for, let's say, Baron Samedi or something like that. You dealing and investigating Samedi from that point now, you're not doing it like a parishioner. You're doing it from the level of somebody trying to get back in tune with their ancestors. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Therefore, the vibrational energy that this collective wisdom that is non-physical, right, therefore it's not moral per se. Therefore, it doesn't fall under the same parameters all the time that we do. So what happens is you are now entering into that as somebody that's trying to find out about their great-grandfather or something like that. So now what happens is that ancestral energy that's in that zombie energy needs to translute itself because you have now shown it that you've risen to a certain level in understanding. You know what I'm saying? In the fact okay. that man becomes the fool for the divinity that he worships. So when you, when them people, when certain people are cutting them chickens to do work on other people and shit like that, those are those people who wind up locked into the realm of worship and then cause and, let's say, effect, because they're now put in a situation where they have created a contract, a non-physical contract with a non-physical entity that they only know based upon again the ancestral knowledge but now they put themselves in a subordinate level so they'll never so they can't really get that true knowledge until they step out of that. But they already made a contract, you see what I'm saying? To be okay. a worshiper. There you for you taking a contract to be subordinate. Gotcha. But the creator, God, the universal energy that created everything, the singularity, God don't put no expectations on somebody. God don't say that you got to cut somebody up or cut a chicken or do some shit like that. That's what a manifestation, you see what I'm saying, of that energy on a on a somewhat lower realm is trying to convince people to do it here so that way it can find more of a foothold into this reality and get more and more people to feed on it because that's the only way it can exist because if that don't happen, it's going to have to go right back to the essence. Okay. Okay, brother. thanks. I appreciate the explanation. You know what I mean? Thank you, my brother. And did I answer the other one? I know you asked me something else, too. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you did. We was talking about, um, I, I was, I mentioned the, uh, about the birth control con- uh, contraceptive that they was, uh, they pushing, they talking about, and was the effect of yes. on women, our sisters, and Catholic. what are they trying to yes. do next? Well, this is a part of what they call the Obamacare, which is the death care system that they're trying to institute on the populace. Basically, what they have done is that they've made a wording in it where, like, everybody got to use the contraception in order for you to get this type of health care, just like they want to force everybody to get this type of health care. But the problem with that is that if you are Catholic, per se, and you are against contraception, that means you can't get health care unless you agree to take contraception, which puts you in contravention with your God, the Pope, who says that you can't use contraception because then that whatever. But even still, if they could do that to them, right, what's to stop them from doing that to anybody else? And they roll with the Catholics, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> all of that. So the fact that they're trying to force them even into a into a, a situation where they now have to uh, conform to that, this is showing you that they are doing this across the board. You know what I'm saying? So this is really a means to further destabilize, I see, to further destabilize not only the American infrastructure, but the actual, but to add fuel to this pseudo, this pseudo religious crusade that they trying to get popping by using this Iran war thing that's coming. So it's like the Christian soldiers, and you know what I'm saying, against the, 
the Muslims in the form of the Arabs, who are really just pansies created by the same government they're fighting anyway. You know what I mean? Okay. The Rus. It's all a Rus. Right. I'm, I'm with you on that. Okay, then. Thanks very much. Thank you, my brother, for the call, man. I appreciate it. Be safe. Uh, 713, you want Super Heavy Radio? Oh, is that me? 713. That's you, brother. How you doing, man? Peace. This is Daniel in Houston. What's going on? Hey, what's up, homie? Hey, man, I've been listening to your show. This this is the business. Uh, Thank you, my brother. Yeah, I I had a concern about uh, Whitney Whitney Houston. Uh, What's what's her uh, her, uh, comedic name? Nem Nemes Bastet. Spell that for me. I'm doing it. N E H M E S. First name Bastet. B A S T E T. Like the goddess. All right. Well, that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that ceremony. When you type when you type in her name, that name, read what comes up in terms of the, the, the ancient Comedian songstress who was revered in the ancient world, who was buried in the Valley of the Kings, that they exhumed in January on the Capricorn, but sought a reason for whatever reason to talk about her again on Monday, the day after the Super Bowl, six days before the ritual killing of Whitney. Okay. So make me feel okay. like they actually found an aspect of her in the past. I say this, too, because her zodiac chart at the time, her Leo, was at 16 degrees, and then her her Aquarius on the other side of that, which in the 12th house, was at 18. So that shows that she was at a point where she was being confronted with different images and different alternate, uh, alternative versions or views as to who she was, both past, present, and future. You know. Okay. And, and and I had I had two other things now I'll let you go. Uh the first thing mm-hmm. is uh uh I noticed that how you said in the hood that people are trying to do uh uh you know, acts on you and you not know because you're not conscious and it's funny because mm-hmm. uh I, I met up uh with a couple of people, just acquaintances, but uh I noticed a book, they were reading a book on high magic. Mhm. Mhm. And uh, right. uh, and they know That's that right. because uh, you know I look like a Minhotep the third exactly like him, and so mm-hmm. whenever mm-hmm. he sees me, he's like, "Oh, yo, Egypt, what's going on, Egypt?" See? And I just want to make sure that these people are not trying to do anything to me. So I have a calling you Egypt. My... Well, they always. That's the, what we have to understand. Just like you got people who do work against you in this world, you got other mm-hmm. people in the world that's doing work for you. You know what I'm saying? Because, okay. again, as above, so below. So ancestrally, these, the devils that we live amongst, know who we are. So if you could, if you, if we could apply America as like a big prison, right, and the government right. is like the COs and the warden, and the president is like the warden, that means that the the board, you know what I mean, parole board and these people, they're like the state municipality. So if you look at it like that, then just like in a prison, they need to know everything that's going on with everybody who lives in the prison in order for them to maintain and not allow any prison breaks, right? So now right. apply that whole concept now to Earth now. Now take Earth now. If you look at Earth as a giant prison colony, right, mm-hmm. these niggas is trying to create a new form of prison, trying to turn this physical prison into a supernatural, metaphysical, intergalactic prison that not only imprisons us physically, but imprisons our soul. This is why in prisons, for instance, You'll never see a prison with a, where the bars are made from steel, straight steel. Because niggas will bend that and get out. If you want to lock somebody right. down, you got to use iron. 
You know what I'm saying? Because iron is a spiritual block. You know what I mean? Like lead. If you want to stop somebody from seeing something, you put it, whatever it is, on a magical tent. When you, like if people are trying to do work on you, if you feel like somebody's going to work on you and you have something that you need to protect, you get a piece of lead or something, and then whatever it is you're trying to protect, you put the lead on top of it. You know what I'm saying? Because right. the lead keeps and it from peering in, like Superman. Right. Right, and, you know, I don't know if anybody else, um, you know, feel this, but for me, I feel like that I need to fast forward into magic, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never spoken Mm -hmm. this way before, but I feel Mm -hmm. like I have to fast forward into magic because um, I noticed something in the place where I I now reside, and uh, there's an attic, and I didn't know that the attic is big enough for me to move around and it's just like another room. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. um and, and mm-hmm. immediately I observed the shape of the attic. It looks like a pyramid. And pyramid, right? Always. Yeah. That's what we used to and do I work wanna, at. I wanna yeah, I wanna do something with it, but I have no idea what I wanna do, but I know I have to do something to you know how people are, are casting spells against us. Well I wanna do something yeah. to where I'm warding off that, whatever that is. And not only for me, but, but what for you do, anybody. What we do, or anybody that has a room and feels like they need to do that. This, things like that, we grew up in, but we just don't know them. Remember when we was growing up, and your moms and your grandmoms and them had that room that nobody could, that you could go into, but you couldn't move nothing, or you couldn't sit on nothing, everything was covered in plastic, remember that shit? Right, right. Right, that was my grandmother. That's the room where they used to do, that's the room where aunties and moms and uncles and them used to do the little secret family rituals and shit and, and get ready for the cotillions and all that other stuff. All of that stuff is was about preparing you to invest in some sort of wicca. You know what I mean? Or wicked. So that means that we all grew up, again, under some form of of possession or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because if you grew up on earth, you know what I'm saying, you've been touched by this somehow in some way. That's why when people try to go in a wit and talk about she a crackhead or drug addict, I'd be like, you bugging. Because I know the same people saying that, the same ones with the drug addicts and the crackheads and all that shit in their family. There's not nobody in this country who was born after the crack era that ain't been affected by that. So the fact that she could actually rise above it to a degree should have been commended. But, you know, these niggas never let us live nothing down. So to start to prepare ourselves, you have to have some place in the crib that's going to be a place of power, of our access of power for you. So that would be this room. So what you would do is you would first clean the room out, totally clean it out, right? Once you clean it all out, you go back in the room and look for something that should not be there. If you don't see nothing, do that at least two more times. On the third time, if you don't see nothing, then you can start the next phase. But whatever you see in there that you feel shouldn't be there, you need to get rid of it. Right? Right. Once you do all of that... You clean the room up, then what you do is you start to prepare it. So you set up your altar or whatever inside of it, you know. Then you would get different color frequencies, specifically like a royal like a royal blue sash or like a gold sash or a silver sash or you could even get foil, aluminum foil and line the the uh the ceiling with it because mm-hmm. when you get this room, what you're gonna start to notice, and you start going in, what you're gonna start to notice is that, hey buddy, you gotta go in the room and get dressed. Right. What you gotta, what you'll find is that the more you go in there, the more you'll hear helicopters and shit flying over your crib. That'll be them trying to, you know, EMP you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? While they right. They, Throw you up for what you're doing, because this room essentially is going to be 
is going to be a symbolic room that rep a magic room, but this magic room is actually representative of your pineal organ. So when you go into this room, every time you do that, you're going into physically, symbolically, you're going into the part of yourself that only you can go into, which is your pineal space. That's why you put, like I said, royal blue and gold and silver and beautiful things in there that have magical properties and intents because these are things that are going to put you in a different state when you walk in. Also, in fact, um, on my website, but but I could just send it to you because, you know, I got some shit. We have brick dust. We just started, uh, we got some old bricks and started going in and, and uh, making it. And then in the process of these, um, you can get some of that and put it, lay a line of it in front of your door, the door of the room and the door of your, the front door of your house. You could also take some of it and actually walk the perimeter of your house and close the whole thing in a circle. You know what I mean? In the okay, terms okay. of like, you know, and then that becomes a circle of protection in that. And then you'll see certain people, when they come to your crib, they won't be able to cross it. They'll trip. They'll drop stuff. They'll they'll ask to come in. You know what I'm saying? When they never did before, you know? Mm-hmm. But those will be the signs for you. That's not for you to put them on the two people. That's for you to keep. Oh, the brick dust got them. You know what I'm saying? Right. You can also um get you like a little um like metal bucket and get mm-hmm. like tools. Get like tools and a piece of metal. Mm-hmm. And put it in the bucket and leave it by the leave it by the door and wrap a little chain around it for Ogun. Because hmm. Ogun in Kemet is Heru. Oh yeah. You know? But Heru is a combination of a saw, a set, and set. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. all representing the mother, I mean the father, a set being the mother, set being the uncle, but also the environment. And so in combination of creating a root, that's basically symbolic of us coming from our mother and our father and living in an environment that on the surface comes off very set-like. But when you start to do the Nas set, you'll see the parallels between him, Samdi, and everything. You know what I mean? Right. So, first generation to be able to articulate all of them and see all of them as the same energy, which then cuts down the delay of power that gets activated in us based on that realization. You know what I mean? So when you see Baron Samdi, and you know Samdi is Anubis and Hades and this one and that one, going all the way back to all this incarnation, all of those incarnations represent alchemical processes that exist within your DNA structure. So acknowledging them as that and seeing them as activated based upon what was put in you makes them ancestors to you as opposed to God's. And therefore, they right. have to help in the way our ancestors would without the need of blood sacrifice and all this other stuff that we've been doing for the past, what, it's been like this, and ain't got nowhere with the shit. Right. So I've been, um, um, I, you know, maybe I, I've just been practicing some things because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting the concept of what sales really are and all that. Mm-hmm. So... What I do in my what I do in my trust because you know I'm you know we've already discussed before what I'm doing with uh, the city with these people and um, mm-hmm. so I you know I don't have no tags on my car I don't have any of mm-hmm. that so what I do is I mm-hmm. wave my hand on the windshield mm-hmm. and I'll say mm-hmm. Most High protect me uh, what do you say Most High uh, make me invisible against uh, all of my enemies. Right. 
And I right. had like eight cops like fly right past me, and it happens like on a daily right. basis. That's right. If people do that every day before they get in their car, they don't have so many That's problems. That's what I do, yeah. We used to, when we had our car, we used to, before we would bounce for the day, we would come out with the water that we slept with under the bed the night before and then mm-hmm. douse the car with it and be like the same thing like you were saying. Or we would say, let the let the water that carried us in our dream safety be the same water that protect us in this physical world safety as we drive through. And then we pour it on the car and keep it moving. You know what I mean? These are the yeah. type of things, these are the things that work for us more than walking up in a court trying to get these niggas to do whatever, get them hope that they're going to today be honoring and honoring something that they've never honored before. Like the stuff that really works, when I was doing stuff with paperwork, it worked. But when I started doing stuff with paperwork and then started adding it, folk ancestral magic on top of it, they they really didn't really want to have nothing to do with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They was happy to get me up out of there how I want it. Because they know that that's the one thing that they fear, but that's the one thing they taught us to fear so we don't deal with it. But the more we accept it and the more we understand, especially now that the stakes have been raised from the, from the assassination of Whitney Houston, we definitely are at a stage now where we can start to make a lot of things happen. So we definitely want to do that, man. I appreciate you calling, man. It's a great question. Oh, I appreciate you know. it too. I listen to your show all the time. It's just uh this is the first time I I guess got a chance to speak on it. <laughs> I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did, you know. But I'm gonna highlight you on the later. Okay. All right, my brother. Peace. Peace. So again to the super heavy family, we wanna say peace. We wanna say thank you guys for coming through once again and holding us down. And uh, inshallah, uh, we will definitely be there on Monday on time, <laughs> as we usually are on Monday, by any unseen event. And uh, between now and then, if you have anything to comment, any new information that may be arising, um, anything like that. Also, yeah, you tell me. Um, my website is up. I just wanted to let you guys know I really appreciate all the love and support you've given me through uh, doing the Melanin Yoga the Melanin Active Yoga DVD, and so all the questions about recipes and what I eat and all of that, I've really been um, inspired and also motivated to do something outside of the whole Facebook world. So the name of the site is blackmambaworkouts.com, and we're going to be working out a lot of different things. So it's, it's going to be a place where I can show um, all the different types of exercises, how to get into inversions and headstands, and also... Um, what foods to cook, what I eat, just opening up my, my door a little bit more and being able to answer questions um, with more specificity by actually sharing and showing what I do. So um, I really appreciate it. Again, it's blackmambaworkouts.com, and it's a work in progress. I'm not a computer technician yet, but I'm getting there, and I say that to say um, I have a lot of things to add on to it. I'm just trying to figure out how to do it well. So it's www.blackmamba, like the snake, M-O-M-B-A, workouts.com. And, uh, yeah, feel free to leave your, your input and all that good stuff and more to come. Thank you so much, you guys, and we'll see you Monday. All right? Bless. Peace, family. So, yeah, you can check out uh, our website. We're going to have the good stuff up there this weekend. If you want to check that out, www.icelandedupateers.com. Also, if you need to holler at me about uh, the online class we have going on right now, titled Native Blood uh, Part 3, um, holler at me at houseofl at hotmail.com. Uh, also, please check out www.sagaasad.com. And uh, thank you guys for all the support. Thank you for the donations. And thank you for taking seriously something that is definitely something we have to uh, and when I say serious, I mean S-E-R-I-O-U-S, and I mean S-I-R-I-U-S. You know what I mean? 